I see it in the mirrors, in the curtains of our house. I don't want you to be worried that we're running out of time. Interesting also, because that's what is happening. We're running out of time when we are silent, when it's reflected in the mirrors and in the curtains. What is supposed to be a place where you see yourself reflected? What is supposed to be a place of comfort? Curtains maybe closing you off from the world outside or protecting you from bright sunlight. Your home is supposed to be a place where you can reflect, where you can self-reflect as a mirror would do, where you could be comforted and shielded as curtains would do, protected from the outside world as your family would do for you. It's perfect for you. Oh, she's like singing out of my soul. Sometimes we get lost in our own little world, but it's all so much bigger than we realize. It's time to take a musical drive to Norway to listen to another song by our beautiful flower queen, Aurora. Willkommen. Welcome, everyone. Aurora put out a new song recently called The Conflict of the Mind. Since we're all about world music and psychology, I think this is the perfect song to look to listen to. And I want to check it out with you. Are you ready? Da, da. Let me start over. My first couple of thoughts already are the muted drum, that hook. Da, 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 da. Sounds, yeah, sad sounds. And perhaps I'm projecting because in my mind, I'm already thinking of conflict, conflict of the mind being the title of the song. But it sounds like this hook, this loop that you would play over and over again, perhaps when your mind is stuck, when you're stuck in a rut or uh, this melody, these notes that you would use to convey sadness and of course I'm also seeing her face here she's looking very melancholic and serious even the way that the camera is moving at one point there's this contrast between her and what was it light blue and that black wall or that yeah that side of the screen that was all black perhaps this contrast here because conflict of the mind conflict often implying there are two different things happening that are working against each other that are in conflict to one another just a couple of thoughts as we're looking let me start over her eyes that chord progression reminds me of something that melody Okay, ganz kurz, a real quick. The way she is, her the, her facial expressions, the way that she is singing or, or moving her mouth and her face expressions as she's singing this, for a second it looked like she was at the verge of tears, right? Conveying this heartbreak she's singing about. about. The contrast of coloring here, again, the black wall, dark, dark blue wall, the white curtains, her in light blue, the, what would be the father here in this dark brown, neat color scheme and contrast when it comes to a cinema when it comes to the cinematography i feel again fitting to this idea of conflict conflict two things that are in conflict that are opposing each other or going against each other 
um, him here drinking, right? Often I feel like a reference to people reverting to some type of substance to numb the pain or to distract themselves. That's my interpretation. The family at a beautiful table, it's this beautiful dining room, everything is set, everything would seem like it was all right, yet you have a bunch of people around the table that seem miserable. A mother who looks very sad, a very sad and um, downcast child that is looking down, not even really making eye contact. The father who's not saying much, but just sipping his wine, again, perhaps just to numb the pain or distract his mind. And we'll talk about the lyrics in a second, but even Aurora's face looking sad at the verge of tears, and I like the effects that were done vocally. When it w In the beginning, it had more of this telephone effect. And I find that interesting because when we're talking about our mind and the thoughts we have and the voices we have in our mind, to have an effect such as a telephone, and it sounded more like some of the, the, one of those old school telephones, right? The way that telephone sounded back in the day, it wasn't quite clean and clear sound. Um, it was a touch muted, a level of rasp. It sounds distant. And I feel like that's fitting when we talk about a conflict in the mind because those voices we have, the things we think of, feel distant, even though they're happening to us in real time in our brain. Those neurons are firing, neural pathways are being shaped. There's still something distant when there's a conflict. There's still something that feels distant when we're talking about our subconscious, when we're talking about thoughts, when we're talking about um, what is going on up here, the things that are harder to see, to pinpoint. And so to have this telephone could almost sound like that voice in the background. But it could also imply this distance, right? You're talking to someone through a phone. Again, back in the day, that rough, raw, rustling sound, that muted sound. You're not there. You're not present with the person. You're calling them over the phone. You're at a distance somewhere. Obviously, that's why you're using a telephone. Here, perhaps, too, implying I'm here, but I'm not here. And then it changes. That effect is removed. And you hear just Aurora's beautiful voice and those high notes, the hook, the notes she's used, again, like in the beginning, even here in her chorus, very catchy, but this almost like sliding up vocally. And then to have the, what sounds like an organ, play that hook. Da, 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 da in a way, almost makes me think of like a phone dial or an internet dial back in the day, AOL <laughs> dialing up, uh, maybe this desire to connect. I know they're speaking digitally, internet, phone, but perhaps this way of communicating, I'm trying to connect. Or it also makes me think of this loop. The notes that are playing make me think of a loop. Um, and when we're talking of conflict in the mind and mental distress, sometimes it does feel like this loop. Bop, 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 you know, like dung, 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 like circus going crazy, wiring around and around the same notes again and again. Just different thoughts, subjective interpretation. This is art. This is what I'm perceiving. Please comment below. Tell me what you think. Let's keep listening. Ooh, that was dope. The harmonies.
Man, Aurora, you beautiful siren. The way she just smiled was interesting. There was something comforting. Yeah, there was something comforting. At first, I was tempted to say eerie, you know, like what's happening. But there was something comforting, something hopeful. I started tearing up. You know, let me let me start by saying this. When it comes to therapy and psychology, you guys know that's what we're all about here. Um, there's this dance for me. I've worked as a therapist. My master's is in counseling psychology. I offer coaching and not I'm not a licensed therapist uh, but I worked as a therapist as a teacher I offer coaching and mentoring and as a therapist there's this fine dance between trying to stay objective and not revealing too much of yourself for the sake of therapy and to have healthy boundaries between client and therapist you guys are not my clients or my patients and so there is a different dance here where I want to be vulnerable because this is a reaction channel. I want to be personal and let you in but at the same time I feel like I need to present wisdom how I do that because I'm still coming at it from a psychological therapeutic angle. I'm still looking at it through the lens of a therapist and uh, someone that wants to encourage you and inspire you and uh, I don't think there would be any wisdom in me just completely breaking down and sharing every single shred uh, of, of life when it comes to my story, unless it benefits you. In therapy, when the therapist um, or the mentor reveals parts of himself or opens up, uh, the goal is for it to be beneficial to the session, for it to be beneficial to the patient. It's supposed to benefit you. Um, not for me to word vomit on you, but for me to benefit you and the parts that I share. It requires wisdom for me not just to say anything and everything that could possibly be harmful to you, but also not to disclose and hide things away to the point where you don't feel safe because you don't you can't relate to me because I'm not being personal. You saw me tearing up. And the reason why was because when I saw those empty clothes laying on the table, it made me think of divorce. This to me looked like a family who on the picture frame on on paper would be this wonderful family. They seem wealthy enough, don't seem to be struggling financially. As from what we can tell, there's food on the table. It's a nice dining room. Everyone's clothed. It's a family, mom and dad, the children. But they're all miserable from distant children and hurting children that are looking down, not making eye contact or resting their head on the table in defeat to an absent-minded father who may be emotionally detached or trying to numb himself with wine to a mother who is super sad, looking down, lonely. They're not looking at one another. It looks to me like a miserable family um, where there's so much more going on behind the curtain than we realize, including possibly divorce death perhaps or divorce and um, seeing the empty clothes there and the reason why I was affected by it is because I am a child of divorce and there's a lot of pain involved in seeing your parents be divorced seeing your family the way you know it break apart your siblings your parents my siblings and I are very close thankfully but there's some there's a lot of grief there's sadness that comes up in me remembering the pain and realizing there's still parts that need to heal when it comes to that. And so that part was relatable because it made me think of divorce. It made me think of a happy family, happy family in quotation marks, that is falling apart. And um, now I'm looking at it, and that's just that part. Even in the end, the mother bringing the birthday cake, right? That typical family gathering where someone's birthday is celebrated. But they all look miserable. The mother's looking at the children, trying to make her child happy. He blows out the candle. Father is still not making much eye contact. Everybody's miserable. What's supposed to be a joyous situation looks very depressing. And then we went from both clothes being gone, uh, Aurora touching the garment of her father, perhaps missing him, perhaps reminiscing, perhaps wondering where he is. Of course, this could also be seen as as the grieving someone's death. But I'm thinking more division. Um, I'm thinking more divorce and separation because the tongue is titled conflict of the mind. Now, of course, there's plenty of conflict in the mind when someone dies and we grief. But I see an unhappy family here, which is why I'm leaning towards this struggle when you can't get through to the other, when you've lost um, a disc, when you've lost connection, when you are speaking past each other or have lost all intimacy and you're just miserable. And it's so tricky because on one hand, there's definitely cases where people seem better off after divorce. But then there's also cases where I feel we live in a society that needs to be reminded that love is not just a feeling. It's choice. It's act. It's it's decision. But there's also situations where you have miserable families who need to heal and need therapy and uh, other families where people say they were better off after they divorced and came to a happy co-parenting situation. There's so many shades of different family lives and, and, and situations and we find a lot of grief here 
And we'll talk about the lyrics in a second. We see a lot of despair happening. Even Aurora's smile in the end gave me hope, but it by hope I pulled hope from it because of the bridge and the lyrics therein. We'll talk about that in a second. Their, their empty clothes, them being gone, just made me sad because I thought that's what often happens in divorce with family and homes being broken apart. The world as you knew it is no longer, right? You you have memories perhaps of being around the table with your parents and your siblings, and now everything's broken apart. And uh, there's so much hurt going on. And it, it, it made me sad. The elements of the telephone effect on her voice, the harmonies at one point were absolutely beautiful. The way that Aurora can hit those high notes, this beautiful si siren of Norway is just absolutely amazing. What was amazing also was in the end, the various notes that she was singing almost sounded like they were occur occurring in call and response or like in tandem. Dun, 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 dun. Like it wasn't those notes and this done this way, but in the concept of responding to each other um occurring at delayed times and that too fits with the idea of conflict and conflict in my mind right you have this happening then you have this happening this is said then this is responded bung 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 like it's this uh, effect cause and effect right you say something i react i say something you react we're missing each other you leave i leave it, it, it's just really really cool how the musical composition fit to the message of the song the lyrics and the music video it's a complicated story that we never talk about. And that's also a key word, right? You have a family that needs to talk, ideally needs some family therapy or a mediator that can help them work through some things. You, we have this, 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 this word, this verbiage, it's complicated, right? When you have a relationship status, you can put married or single or it's complicated. And don't we know that relationships are complicated, family life and those dynamics that we never talk about. Therein lies often the, the problem. People are not talking. People are not communicating or working through it. I see it in the mirrors, in the curtains of our house. I don't want you to be worried That's we're, that we're running out of time. Interesting also because that's what is happening. We're running out of time when we are silent, when it's a reflected in the mirrors and in the curtains. What is supposed to be a place where you see yourself reflected? What is supposed to be a place of comfort? Curtains maybe closing you off from the world outside or protecting you from bright sunlight. Your home is supposed to be a place where you can reflect, where you can self-reflect as a mirror would do, where you could be comforted and shielded as curtains would do, protected from the outside world as your family would do for you. And here instead, it's this complication it's people not talking to one another i don't want you to be worried that we're running out of time sadly we are running out of time when we fight when we don't talk we're losing precious time that we can't get back but here aurora as the child in the family is saying i don't want you to be worried that we're running out of time it doesn't matter where we're going we can leave it all behind to me this sounds hopeful perhaps this child that is making the suggestion we can leave this behind maybe saying we can have a fresh start. And that would be interesting because often you find children of a broken home pleading with their parents or trying to be that mediator and peacemaker in the family saying, hey, we can leave this behind. We can have a new beginning. Maybe even saying it doesn't matter where we're going, as in it doesn't matter where we go. All this stuff, all this crap, all this division, we can just leave that behind. Let's have a fresh start for, together, perhaps. Only when I see you cry, I feel conflicted in my mind. It fills my heart up and it breaks me at the very same time. Interesting. When I see you cry, I feel conflicted in my mind. Okay, is this perhaps just speaking of feeling torn? Because when I'm thinking here, again, of, con of divorce, of a family being broken apart, the conflict here would be, on one hand, wanting your family to stay together, thinking there must be a way to leave things behind to make a new start, or perhaps also the conflict of feeling like maybe it's better we break up. Maybe it's better we go our separate ways. Maybe it's better that we leave it, this behind. We have mixed feelings. We have various ways we perceive what's happening around us. And there's, therein lies the conflict. But when she sees their, her family cry, there is this conflict. It fills my heart up in the sense of makes me happy or maybe in the sense of it affects me emotionally. It maybe gives me hope. It, it does something with my heart. But it breaks me at the very same time. So on one hand, it fills my heart up as in it makes me happy to see that you're crying, but not necessarily in a masochistic or sadistic type of way, but in the sense of there's still some emotion happening here. Something's still alive, right? If a person is still crying or feeling, there is still hope. But also it breaks me at the very same time. When you open up the gates for me and leave the world behind, we find proof of love is hidden in the conflict of the mind. 
interesting when you open up the gates for me maybe like let me in kind of maybe perhaps why they zoomed in on the eyes in the beginning because they say the eyes are the window to our soul right if I look at you and make eye contact that means something there's a level of intimacy here when I open up the gates when I share something of myself or I tell you what's going on and I leave the world behind shut everything else out right close those curtains we find proof of love is hidden in the conflict of the mind maybe saying in that conflict, in that turmoil, there's still love. There's still that glimmer of there's something here. Perhaps why it ended with her mother bringing the cake and Aurora smiling. This idea that there's still love hidden here. We, we still love each other. We're still trying to make this work, right? That's why she's bringing the cake. That's why we're still trying to celebrate. We're looking. We're clinging to moments of happiness together. And I feel like this goes for any type of relationship. Even with ourselves, we're still hoping for there to be love somewhere deep inside for ourselves and for others. I remember how I'd find you, fingers tearing through the ground. Were you digging something up or did you bury something down? Oh, wow. Wow. Fingers tearing through the ground. That sounds such a poetic way of also expressing someone in despair. Because when someone's digging through dirt, that's not usually a very romantic or a very beautiful, clean picture. It's messy. It's dirty. Dirt under your nails. Maybe there's a frantic search for something you've lost or you're searching for something or burying something, trying to hurry before someone catches you. So it's, it's, a, it's a dramatic scene in my mind. Fear is tearing through the ground, beautifully worded. Were you digging something up or bury, did you bury something down? When it comes to the emotional uh, aspect here or, or communication in a family, I'm thinking here, when we when we try to disclose ourselves and when we are when there's a barrier between us there's this this silence there's this wall it requires opening up right but the question that needs to be asked is are we pulling things up right old memories old pain or are we burying something pushing it under the rug trying to cover it up are we trying to hide it when you bury something you don't want it to be seen by anybody else you want it out of sight you want it away in your soul i found a thirst with only salt inside your cup ooh salt now as you probably know, makes you more thirsty. So if there's salt in your cup, sheesh, there's no water, right? You're, you're dehydrated, you're, you're thirsty. In your soul, I found a thirst with only salt inside your cup. In your eyes, I saw a longing while I longed to lift you up. Maybe again here, this idea of we're speaking past each other, that I see a longing in your eyes. You're trying to get through to me. You long for me to pursue you. Well, I long to lift you up. I long to be there for you. You guys, this is so fitting when it comes to marriage and relationship because often that's the case. People are speaking past each other. They're missing the mark. And deep inside, they just want to be loved, right? A lot of times for men, it's that desire for respect. They want to be admired. They want to be the hero. They want to know that the woman still needs him. And in her frustration, she might not respect him as much anymore, or the woman might not tell him what she needs and, 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 and feels afraid. She doesn't feel safe because a woman's big desire often is to feel safe and loved, not just physically safe from harm, but emotionally. And so she might not speak up because she doesn't feel safe. She now doesn't speak up. She now doesn't connect. She now doesn't show her admiration. And he feels disrespected. And two people are just, and this is just one example, pulling walls up, talking past each other. Everybody's hiding behind their walls. Only when I see you cry, I feel conflicted in my mind. It fills my heart up and breaks it at the very same time. And then the bridge. This part was beautiful. Don't let your spirit die. This is just the conflict of the mind. Is your heart alive? You'll overcome a conflict of the mind. Spirit, mind, heart. Beautiful holistic approach, Aurora. I love it. Don't let your spirit die. As she's singing that over and over again, that beautiful hook, her beautiful voice, the way she slid up with her, with her voice through those notes. It's this idea of hope to me. Don't let your spirit die. Don't give up. Don't let your spirit die. Because when that dies, we're in a dark place. Okay. When we have physical ailments, that's hard. When we have a struggle of the mind, conflict of the mind, that's hard. But when your spirit dies, oof, that's that core part of us that we can't put our finger on, that we can't fully see, but it is the core essence of who we are. And in my mind. And so that urge, don't let your spirit die. Don't give up. There's still life left, right? This is just a conflict of the mind. Remember, this is just a battlefield of the mind. This is not the end. This is just a conflict. And like with anything, conflicts can be overcome, sometimes through compromise, sometimes through compassion, sometimes through cooperation and communication. But a conflict simply means two things that are in opposing directions or an opposing view to each other. That can be overcome. Is your heart alive, right? Are you still alive? Are you still, is it still beating? There's still time. I don't want to worry you that we're running out of time because things will go bad if we don't address this. But 
if, if your heart is still beating, there is still time. And that goes for our marriages, that goes for our families, that goes for our relationship with anyone, it, even with ourselves. If your heart is still beating and you're, don't let your spirit die, if your heart is still alive, remember this is just a conflict of the mind. This is just a conflict of the mind. You'll overcome a conflict of the mind. Don't let your spirit die. Love is, let your spirit, and then the, the tag or the, the, the call and response part, love is, let your spirit die. The, the, the vocalization and the harmonies here, the voice is tagging that on, what she's saying. Love is, is your heart alive? Love, is your heart alive? So the, the, the tag, the, I don't know if it's background singers or just Aurora herself here doing all the singing. You'll overcome a conflict of the mind. Love is you. Ooh. Is your heart alive? You'll overcome a conflict of the mind. Love is you. You are love. You know, that is so beautiful because that is this reminder. What a therapeutic reminder in this turmoil, in this very relatable scenario of conflict and family drama and turmoil and misunderstanding and lack of connection. This reminder, don't let your spirit die. You can overcome this conflict of the mind. Love is. Love, love is. Love is you. There is love. So at first, when it says love, when I think the answer or the background vocalist, the, the vocalization, the singer, she sings love. Perhaps is this a command, instruction, an encouragement? Love, as, a, as in do it, love, be kind, speak truth, choose life, love. Love is to then say there is love here. Love is, it's happening here. It's in it around us, even within this conflict of the mind, even behind our walls and behind that mirror and behind those curtains. Love is. And then to say, love is you. You are love. When we feel like we have or are something and it's directly tied to our identity, we address things so much more than when we think it's external and something for us to chase. If I feel like beauty is something out there that I have to attain versus going, I am beauty, I am beautiful. It's way more personal and I can operate from that knowledge and not an understanding versus looking for it externally. If I understand I am love versus, oh, I've got a love or it's out there, right? I am love. Then all I can do is love. If I believe I am love, I am love. That's who I am. That's my identity. I'm going to love by default because that's who I am, right? A bird sings, a bear growls, a monkey climbs, right? I am love. What I am, I do. If you are love, that is what you will do. And out of that place, you can now operate and communicate with your loved ones and show kindness and do what love does, which is it's a verb, it's action, it's kindness, it's speaking life, it's trying to get through to the other. It's this beautiful reminder that we are love and we have everything we need to be kind to others, to break through. And I know that sounds perhaps more simple than it really is in real life because obviously the way the other person in that relationship responds and is willing to work on us, on the relationship, that does matter but it's such a beautiful song. I love how she always finds a way to tap into these deep, meaningful topics with so much love and hope and perspective. What did you think? Comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next ride. Ayo! Hey